Hello everyone, thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video. Um, the intention of this video is to really lay out a roadmap for the year ahead um, about the information we know about exams, GCSEs, the curriculum, etc. Um, there's an awful lot of information that uh, came out just before we broke up for the summer holidays in the form of consultations um, from the government and from Ofqual. Uh, they closed those consultations at the start of August and we were expecting to hear back from what the, the plan was, what the confirmed plan was. Unfortunately, uh, that is not the case. They have now told us that they will only um, be confirming those final arrangements at the start of October, which is uh, incredibly frustrating. Um, we didn't want to wait until that point, though, to release what we think they're going to be doing. Um, so the next 20 minutes or so is just to highlight the key bits of information that you will need um, and uh, allow you to kind of have a read and a, a look over some of the documents that I've sent you also via email so that you can get in touch with us via form tutors, Mr. Stevens, myself, if you've got any queries. As a reminder, um, the, your tutor groups for your child are on the screen there. Um, you're very au fair with uh, contacting your child's form tutor in the first instance um, if there's any issues. Um, so please continue to do so. Um, I would suggest con contacting form tutors first or class teachers first um, because they are most likely to know which person to direct your query to if it's something they can't answer themselves. Um, so all those contact details are on the board. Um, I also thought it was important just to stress that even though the last two and a half years, two years really, have, have been severely disrupted by COVID-19, um, there isn't a lot of um, resilience inbuilt into our young people and, and knowledge, importantly, and skills that are inbuilt into you all um, that have been the case since since reception in year one. It's the, This year 11 is the culmination of... Um, just over 11 years uh, of, of teaching in, in formal education and we're now into the 11th hour whereby we have now got the exams on the horizon at the end of the year in June um, and we're going to be structuring various mock exams through the course of the year to allow you to peak and trough, to allow you to kind of revise for exams, um, first set of mock exams is in November so that you start to build in into your um, long term memory lots of the, uh, the content that you're going to need for those final exams. So in terms of the key changes, um, the headline from government is that there will be no teacher assessed grades this year. It's going to be a return to exams. We've also been told by the exam boards that they want us to really um, focus on teaching um, and coursework and, and plan to do mock exams as if this was any other year and to kind of ignore the fact that we've got a pandemic lurking in the background. Um, what they have said, though, uh, in their weekly or uh, yeah last one was a weekly weekly email to us, is that uh, please for us to keep any of the assessments that we do do in case they require it for an evidence, in terms of evidence. Um, I'm guessing in terms of a plan B situation, in terms of contingency plans, if the pandemic takes a turn for the worse over the winter uh, and they do have to kind of revert to something else, whether that be teacher assessed grades, etc., it would be a case that they would require us to, uh, to have evidence of, of the grades that we'd be submitting. So. Um, key headline is that there won't be any of these teacher assessed grades, there will be a return to exams. Um, but in addition, the exam boards are going to make changes to the exams and subjects themselves to take account of lost learning. They're going to um, pre-release um, what will be on those final exams and around about Easter time. In the consultation, they had said that they were um, planning to do it on Easter. Uh, myself and my French group, in fact, replied to the off call consultation saying that we thought it should be slightly earlier to allow you to focus your revision a bit more. However, we do expect it to be around about Easter time when you find out what exact topics will be up on each of the exams. So there's a timeline for the year ahead. As I mentioned, we're trying to work almost in waves throughout the course of this year 11 over the course of the next nine months. Um, our first mock exam period was scheduled for the 15th to the 26th of November. That's the um, third week back after our October half term. So it allows students to do quite a bit of planned revision through the October half term. It allows them to get the um, college and sixth form open evenings out of the way. Um, they traditionally are the first two weeks of um, November. So we don't want you to have to clash um, commitments, as it were, trying to revise the night before an exam and have a, an art college evening to attend. So that's the first um, mock exam period scheduled. Parents evening is the 6th of January, Thursday the 6th of January followed by the mock exam period two, which is at the um, middle 
start to middle of March, from the 7th to the 18th of March, again, falls in waves so that we're trying to get our students to build in naturally lots of long-term memory, lots of long-term learning into uh, in, yeah, into their minds. The final GCSE exam period is scheduled and the provisional timetable has come out. I've given you the link on uh, the letter I've sent you from the 16th of May to the 30th of June. The first exam is always RS and that's on the 16th. And the, um, the final one for most students will actually be on the 23rd, which is a science exam. There's also a further maths exam on the 27th. However, um, one of the things that parents often ask me at evenings like this or on videos like this is um, when is the end? When's the last day of formal schooling? Well, the last day of formal schooling is officially the 30th of June. It's the last um, Friday or the last um, day of June of the year in which your young person turns 16. However, it's really important for me to stress the 29th of June. When did the 29th of June is contingency day? That is when... Um, if we were to have a crisis whereby exams could not take place on a particular day, those exams would just shift to the Wednesday, the 29th of June. So in terms of booking holidays and things like that, please can I ask you not to do anything before Wednesday, the 29th of June. And that is because Wednesday, the 29th of June could be used for um, uh, exams that can't take place for whatever reason. The most common, well, that's perhaps not the most common, but the, the easiest um, Way to understand this is if the queen were to die during the exam period um, and her funeral was to, was to take place during the exam period there would be a period of national mourning um, and nothing would be able to take place on that day the exams would not be able to happen on um, yeah, any given day so they would then shift to the 29th of june um, there are other situations where a contingency day can be used but that's the one i always use with um, my year 11s just to um, yeah, get them to understand how important it is on the letter, I've also sent to you a, uh, a little calendar of the year ahead with uh, superimposed key dates on it that show you it laid out as the year ahead. And for the main GCC exam window that you can see there, the exam boards have actually released a provisional timetable. The provisional timetable is here next. Um, I've, I've summed it up um, into a much more user-friendly format, but I've not released it key there directly to you. Um, you might want to pause the video now just to have a look at it, you and your young person, to, to find out when your um, exams are. We don't really anticipate too many changes, but it is provisional. We will write to you around about December time when they finally do confirm everything. Um, but that's the provisional timetable. It looks really different to any other year I've seen in my 16 years of doing this job. Um, usually what happens, and you can set your watch by it, is that uh, usually you have the RS paper first thing on the first Monday and then you have the second RS paper on the uh, Thursday of that first week. Um, that's different this year. The RS paper is still on the first Monday, but it is the second paper is until 10 days later. And we believe, whilst they haven't officially said this, that we believe the reason why they're doing this is to allow for students who may have to isolate due to COVID-19 the chance to be able to sit at least one exam in their subjects so that they can count. So in that case of RS that I've just used there, um, if your young person was having to isolate due to catching COVID on Monday the 16th, they would at least have paper two on the 26th to be able to sit, to be able to uh, to, to, to award a final GCSE grade. Um, crucially, I don't know what they have, are planning for um, subjects where there is only one exam and those situations arise so on that first week if you look at drama there's only one uh, there's only ever one drama exam um, and if that would be the case whereby a student was isolating for the drama exam that's their one and only shot we haven't been told yet what would happen would it be that it would just be coursework that would be used would it be that contingency day would be used would it be that contingency day was used just for those exams that is those one shot exams that a, a student would have to uh, do i mean if, if you look at that first week it's just drama that's the one shot exam so it could be potentially that the drama exam would get shifted to the 29th of june and um the young person would have to take a an exam that would be different to his peer his or her peers um, we just don't know. So um, when we do find that out, I will communicate that with the year group and let them know. It, it, it means that the, the, the weighting of the uh, exam period is slightly different as well. Traditionally, you find uh, quite a few exams in those first two weeks um, to get uh, to allow markers to, to get crack on with the marking and to, to get the, the, the students just, just on the just 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 
gone and ready for it really because um, they'll have had two or three weeks of uh, preparation in school. But because of the way that they're building in 10 days, it does mean that we're slightly skewed more to uh, having more exams after half term than we would usually have. So there's quite a few key exams in that second week and then second block after the half term holiday. In particular, there's quite a few um, days where we've got double exams for lots of the year group. For example, on Wednesday, the 8th of June, we've got English literature in the morning and physics in the afternoon, which is which is really tricky. There are quite a few clashes as well. I've never seen child development, dance and music on the same day. And we've got a few students that do dance and music. Um, what would happen in those situations is that the students um, who have a clash would do one of those exams in the morning uh, alongside the rest of their cohort for that particular subject. They would then uh, go off to a, a little room to have some time off together and, um, and be kept away from the other students and then sit their other exam in the afternoon um, so that they couldn't speak to their friends about what came up in the exam. It's it's, it's quite a common occurrence to have clashes and we, we are very used to dealing with it, but um, it does seem there are quite a few this year. Um, I think last year, provisionally, we only had one or two. I think it's going to affect a good 10 to 12 students this year. Um, in addition to those exams, the exam boards have released that they're going to make some key changes to the actual uh, content of those exams. And again, on your letter that I've sent out this morning, um, it details everything that you need to know. For art and design, there is no exam. There's no tenor exam. It's purely coursework. The, Mrs. Bricklebank and Mrs. Landon will continue to set um, little uh, deadlines throughout the course of the year. So it's not just one big deadline by the Easter holidays. Um, but uh, yeah, the exam is now gone. For dance, the uh, coursework element has been reduced. You don't no longer have to uh, perform as part of a, a group, which is uh, good for some students. The written exam stays the same. For DT, the coursework doesn't have to be fully completed. However, the caveat to that is in order to be able to access grades seven, eight and nine, the exam boards would like to see it made. So as a result, we are pushing all our students to make sure everything is completed as if it was a completely normal year. Um, the deadlines for these particular courseworks will always be by the Easter holidays. Um, the official deadline is the 7th of May. However, we need time to be able to mark it and moderate it. And we do that during the Easter holidays. And then if there are any issues to get it back to the students to uh, to 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 kind of uh, look at and, and and correct before we finally submit it. For Dan, uh, sorry, for drama, um, for the two pieces of coursework, they can be a monologue. They don't have to be part of a group, uh, which again, uh, favours quite a few of our students. Um, English language, there's no change. On the letter, I said that I'd only write about uh, subjects where there were changes, but for English, math and science, I've included them on this table just for completeness, just because of the fact that people like to know about English. Um, so English language doesn't change, but English literature does. There will be more optional topics during the exam. So there will always be a Shakespeare play to write about, so for Macbeth, but for the Christmas Carol, say for example, question, usually there is one Christmas Carol question. They're indicating that there will actually be a choice of two for the students to pick their favorite from, or three. They're gonna give more choice during the exams. For food prep, um, they have removed uh, one piece of coursework. There's now only one, NEA2, and that means that the students only have to uh, cook up two dishes in three hours. Um, so that's quite good. It reduces down that. Um, we we're going to be aiming to do that after the February half term, just before the mock exams. The written exams stay the same for that. For geography, there will still be three exams, but there'll be, again, there'll be lots more optional questions in paper too. Uh, lots of do this section or this section and it will allow the students to pick topics that they are more familiar with, they're more comfortable with, to take into consideration lost learning. On the next page, um, we've got history. Um, there will be some changes to the written exam whereby um, students, again, will be given lots more choice of the particular topic to answer. Um, so, for example, Nazi Germany, there will be uh, three or four different questions to pick from, so the students can pick the question that most suits them. For maths, there's no change, although they have said that um, they're uh, considering allowing students to be given formulas, more formula sheets in the exams. In French, which is my speciality, um, the speaking exam returns. Last year, there was no speaking exam, but this year it does come back. Um, again, that's provisional, but we are fully anticipating there to be a French uh, speaking exam. So we will be doing a mock exam 
in March time and then the full speaking exam will be after we come back after the Easter holidays in the last week of April beginning of May. Um, again there's lots of lots of extra choice onto the writing paper so that students have uh, a better pick of the questions that suit them. So for example I call them 90 word questions on the writing paper. Usually we have two choices they're now going to give three so um, that's really beneficial for our students I think. For music, the um, the requirements in the coursework have been shortened down slightly. The, the length isn't as long, and um, they can now be solo performance as well as ensemble. Um, Mr. Lowe would like the deadline for these pieces of coursework is slightly earlier, the February half term, so that we can then try, uh, if needed, to um, kind of work on any little uh, last little bits before the, the the final deadline of the Easter holidays. For PE, the coursework has been reduced to just two activities. It used to be three, it's now two, and both of those activities can be individual, which again is really good for our students who play golf or do trampolining, and, um, any combination of those. And it's to take into consideration the fact that during lockdown, in particular in year 10, the ability to video or uh, get evidence for team sports was severely limited. I play a lot of hockey outside of school, and. Um, there's a young man in, in our team who's, who does uh, A-level PE and we didn't play hockey from um, from December all the way through to the end of the season. So his ability to have PE coursework was fairly limited. Um, so that's the change to, to take that into consideration. Uh, and finally, for science, the students no longer have to do the core practicals, but they have to observe them. So they can be either on YouTube observed or they can be done in class with the teacher doing them. And again, we uh, are led to believe that formula sheets will be provided um, that was in the guidance, but we'll wait and see with regards to those. So those are the key dates for the year. Again, they're all on your um, uh, little uh, letter that I've sent out this morning. I've also included on there a few things that are beyond us um, that are to do with college. So at the start of January, there is traditionally a college taster days, which usually take place on the Tuesday and Thursday of that week whereby students have the ability to go out and experience the subjects they want to do at the particular colleges. So for example, um, you could go to York College on the Tuesday and do A-level Maths, English, Science, um, and see what it's like there. And then on Thursday, they could go off to uh, Archbishop Holgate and do Maths, English, Science and, and see what it's like there. And it's been very useful in the past for students to get a real feel of, of what a college environment looks like and, and what the lessons feel like. And um, that wasn't able to run this past year but we're hopeful that it is going to run this year um, provided the pandemic doesn't uh, intervene. Traditionally the deadline for college applications is also fr the last Friday before we break up for uh, February half term, Friday the 18th of February and in York it's slightly different to the local, other authorities like Leeds and, and Wakefield where I've previously worked whereby you you do it centrally. In York you have to apply directly to each of the institutions that you would like your child to attend. Um, so that, that means there's more than one application form to fill in. Lots of them now are online. The York College one is entirely online. Um, the, there's paper copies available for the, the All Saints ones and the Archbishop Holgate ones, but um, you have to apply to each one that you would like your child to attend to. Um, to help with that, we've got Mrs Curley, who's available in school, and she is um, planning to do um, a careers appointment with every child in school, whether or not you want it or not. Um, uh, we have got the ability for your child to have one should they wish. Um, if you your child does not want to have a careers appointment, that's absolutely fine. We will book one in. However, when the time comes round, Miss Curley will give usually about two weeks notice and it's just a case of letting us know that they don't want that appointment so we can reschedule it and give it to someone else. We started this process way back in um, year 10. Um, I think we started it around about May, June time, uh, and we will end up having um, some students who would like to have a second or a third careers appointment. That's fine. Um, we will be able to do that, but we would like to get through everyone to have at least one appointment first. Okay, so those are the main deadlines. We have uh, been giving lots of advice to students over the course of the past uh, few weeks um, since they've come back. Um, from their holidays and, and the key thing is maximizing their attendance, making sure they're in school, making sure that they're sat down in lessons. Um, for COVID-19, we're obviously gonna have interruptions that aren't as great as last academic year because the rules changed on the 16th of August. If your child is isolated due to COVID, when you ring into attendance to tell us when their isolation ends, if you would like remote learning to be provided for your child, please request it to Mrs. Williams, who's our um, 
attendance officer. Um, we would like all year 11s to take part in that and we'll be able to have them dialing in, etc. But we do need to know if your child would like that or if you would like that. Obviously, we, we can't tell whether or not um, uh, the symptoms are severe enough for your child to be too ill to be do that work. So we don't automatically provide it as standard now. And that's purely because of the fact that some of our students that we've had in these first couple of weeks back have been so poorly with it that um, us providing work to them just adds an extra layer of stress that the students don't need. Um, so we would like you to request it if your child is isolating due to COVID, just to tell us, yep, yeah, they're, they're asymptomatic, but they've got to isolate, but we would like work. Just let us know and we can get them dialing into lessons just as we had during the main pandemic. Um, we're also stressing to the students of the, the importance of um, mock, the mock exams that we've got coming up um, and the ability to, and the importance of revising for those so that we can build lots of things into their long term memory. And um, for the mock exams, we'll be treating them like the main exams. So we'll be pre releasing some of the topics that will be coming up in those exams so the students kind of treat it like one of those full on exams. And we're, we're encouraging the students to be active in their um, revision so they do a lot of retrieval practice. I'm going to do an assembly for all our students on the 4th of October, which highlights the three key revision uh, principles we'd like them to focus on this year. I will again release that assembly to you as parents. Um, I'm going to ask Mrs. Stevens to record me as I do it in the hall so that you can see some of the key things. You can reinforce those things at home. And the key thing is to practice rather than just spend lots of time writing down uh, lots of revision notes on pretty cards. It's, it's doing kind of practicing questions, having a go at um, past papers, those types of things. Those are the things we're really um, stressing to the students. Um, so you as parents, what can you do? Well, the first thing is, and the key number one rule is to be overwhelmingly positive. Um, we have this every year whereby we'll have peaks and troughs. We'll have good days and we'll have bad days. Um, and we will be um, a source of positivity in school. We are going to make sure that our students who've missed out so much on the last 18 months are, are given all the resources and everything they need to be able to succeed given the, the, the trauma really that they've been through. We will be positive and we'd like you to do the same. Okay, for revision, if you can, please try and um, provide uh, a quiet space for when your child does come to do revision, whether that be in a little office or in their bedroom or even a garage or somewhere um, that you can just have them doing some revision. If that's not going to be the case at home and, and it's going to be um, too much in terms of the, the household environment being a bit too noisy for your students, we can provide that in school as well. We've got um, after school uh, clubs that run till 4.20 that we can at least extend the school day and provide uh, an extra hour's worth of revision in school that can um, we can provide a, a quiet space for as well. Um, the last thing I'd also um, kind of ask you to do is, is is to potentially think about your child and if they are a characteristic young person, whether they really um, respond to being offered some kind of carrot in the future. I was, uh, when I did my GCSEs, my parents offered me um, a pair of new cricket pads if I got a set certain number of grades and I that just focused my mind because I was really into my cricket, really wanted these amazing blooming cricket pads and ended up really focusing me. If you've got a child like that, consider um, offering them small little rewards or kind of planning things like days out together as a family that just breaks things up and just kind of just provides them with short-term and long-term goals and things to aim for. Because um, over the course of nine months, um, GCSE's far off can seem like quite a, a distance ahead. For in terms of how to revise, as I mentioned, we're going to um, do a, a assembly on the 4th of October um, and highlight some of the key things. We're also doing quite a bit of work in our enrichment lessons on how to revise and then our well-being lessons as well. Uh, this year for Year 11, we have scheduled in their actual timetable one hour of well-being where they can stop and have a break from their normal lessons. And it's entirely up to them what they would like to do. Um, so they could choose to go to a quiet, quiet space and do some coursework if they want. They can choose to go to the cafe with the, the Mr. Rab's Chapel and have some quiet time there. We've got various clubs. We've got an extra P lesson going on. We've got various things. And hopefully they've come home and told you about their first well-being lesson that happened yesterday on Thursday. And uh, came back very positive of this kind of this kind of stop, this kind of to normal lessons that just allow them to just to think a little bit differently. So we're going to um, continue with that as well as uh, our enrichment lessons. 
as well as our um, revision assembly on the 4th of October. And in addition, we're going to provide further resources throughout the course of the year. So I will be uh, creating my own revision timetable for the students. Uh, they don't have to use it, but it uh, basically focuses revision from the Easter holidays all the way through to the end of the exam period with a set block that they have to follow. It's very useful. It's it, it, Lots of our students have found it very, very useful in the past when I've done this. We're also going to purchase for all our students a revision planner uh, that gives them some extra tips and, and is very useful for the mock exam period for them to plan their revision in. There is also an attached to my email that I've sent out to all parents of an information booklet. That information booklet is quite weighty and there's quite a lot of detail in it and it can be quite a lot of information to read. So um, that's mainly for parents and those people that really want to know the final details of everything. We've just um, done it for completeness, as it were. I also attached to my email I've sent is a um, presentation from Mrs. Bowes and a, a presentation from Mr. Fraser for English and Maths, as well as Miss Scannon for some wellbeing support. In my letter as well, one of the other things that also gets asked of me all the time is, um, can you recommend a good revision guide that I can purchase for my child? We've done that on the letter and in the PDF that I've sent out, you'll be able to click on the precise link that takes you directly to the Amazon page or the CGP uh, page that allows you to per, uh, purchase those books if you wanted to. There's no requisite to do so, prerequisite or requirement to do so. Um, it's just purely if you wanted to. Okay, so thank you very much for taking the time uh, to watch this. Hopefully that explains quite a few of the changes that have been made this year. Um, as I say, we're expecting the final confirmed uh, guidance to come out at the start of October, at which point I will uh, write back to you um, with those details alongside the mock exam timetable. Um, my aim, I'm uh, mine and Mrs. Stevens' aim this year is to try and provide a monthly update where we can, a monthly letter to kind of keep you in the loop as we go through the year. Um, so in October, it'll be very much about uh, the careers fair that we're planning plus mock exams. November will be about the mocks. Year. Uh, December will be about the parents' evening and the year, the first report. January will be an update about um, college applications and so on and we'll try and do a monthly letter usually around about the middle of the month if possible um, so that you uh, know when it's going to fall and hit so that we'll try and get that to you so you you, you kind of you kept it up to date a monthly newsletter as it were about uh, this year ahead okay thank you very much for watching